I want to talk about um, positioning as a service. This was one of my favorite examples I actually shared when I was reading the book over the weekend. Two of my friends I shared your example of the piano teacher with because I think it's so genius. And I know that folks watching this show, and I heard this, I was speaking at an event in San Francisco, and a woman stood up and she started talking about, she's like, but there's so much noise out there. Like, how am I going to stand apart? And I thought when I read your ingenious idea about the access and specifically the piano teacher. Can right. you share that? Because I think people will see themselves in a whole new perspective. So traditional marketers, if you went to business school or whatever, would talk about differentiation. They talk about how do I cut through the clutter and the noise. That's selfish. That says, I've worked hard. How do I get people to me? Let's throw that out and say, that person you seek to serve, they have a problem. And their problem is there's too much noise. The problem is they don't know what to pick. The problem is they've got a kid they want to educate in music, but they're not sure how. Can I offer them a service to help them see what their choices are? Now it's generous. So in the case of the piano teacher, you know what I know is that no one drives more than 20 miles to go to a piano lesson. So let's call it five miles. So that's the circle of people who can send someone to, to, to take a lesson with me. But then I can create axes and I can have as many as I want, but two is, are all, will fit in my brain. And I get to pick what the edges are. So some of the edges could be cheap and expensive. Some of the edges could be kind or, um, you know, Eastern European in their strictness. Some of them could be focusing on jazz. Some of them could be focusing on classical. And you can look at an axis this way and an axis this way. And if you draw, oh, this one, this one, this one, this one, there's someone who's already over here. There's someone who's always over here but there's no one who offers this combination. So on your behalf, I will live in this corner. And if that's what you're looking for, right, great. And if I talk to you and I realize it's not what you're looking for, I will eagerly send you to that other teacher. Yes. Because I am here to help you get what you want, not to persuade you that you are wrong. Yes. And that shift is so important because it gives us this feeling of sufficiency which is not that I have to clear everything off the table so I can go public one day. Right. It's there's enough as long as I stand for something and I can ignore the critics because I'm the critics are critics because it's not for them. Thanks for letting me know. There's someone over there who's for you. This is for someone else. Yes, and I loved it. And I was sharing with my friend too with the piano teacher example. If someone gets excited and passionate about being really rigorous and says, you know what? If you want your child to have the best chance of winning in a competition, you want the practice to be like this. It's about discipline. It's about showing up. It's about, you know, winning, whatever that means. I'm the teacher for you. We're on the other end of the spectrum. Let's say you're a piano teacher and you're like, it is about the holisticness of the experience and the creative expression. And your child is going to love playing and they're going to tap into their ability to express their emotions through music. Well, then you go to that teacher. And I felt like that example was so wonderful because it allows all of us to also say, well, not only what are the problems that the market wants solved, but who and how can I best make those promises and exceed them? Exactly. Which yes. leads to this crazy thing of authenticity. Yes. Because I don't believe in authenticity. I think authenticity is a trap. And here's how I know it. If you need knee surgery and you go to the surgeon and on operating day, she says, yeah, I, I had a fight with my family. I don't really feel like doing surgery. You're like, no, this isn't that. I want, just keep your promise. Be consistent. Do this for me. The drama in your head, not my problem. I want you to be a professional. So if you show up in a marketplace where every single piano teacher is rigorous and strict and wants to win prizes, and you want to make a living as a piano teacher, well, positioning as a service says you don't get to be the authentic one who's just like everyone else. You have to be the consistent one who makes a promise that says, I'm here to serve your kids. And so what I do is blues and joy and fun, and they want to come back next week. That's what I offer. Now, in your spare time, if you want to go be the rigorous player of Beethoven, please go at it. But if you're a professional, make a promise and keep it.